This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by writer-director Ned Crowley from Middleman, which mm -hmm. is premiering here at SIF. Yes, it is. Um, one of the things, since we got a limited amount of time, I just want to jump right into is the notion of like sort of the pacing of this movie. Uh, I was talking with Jim, and I sort of described it as sort of like building to a boiling point, where it's sort of like everything sort of is like manageable up to a certain point, and then it just goes berserk. Um, because this is the kind of film that easily could sort of go crazy and become like a Lloyd Kaufman movie otherwise, and I really appreciate the way you guys built it out. Um, how challenging was it to sort of write that out and sort of pace that out as a director? Because it, it could very easily skew into just craziness from the moment you start. Yeah, otherwise. it was funny. We, you know, I think even with Jim, um, we wanted to ground it in a certain, we wanted to, I mean, it is kind of, it does go off on a, on a, take a life of its own, but we wanted to ground it in kind of a real world and we wanted to keep the performances deadpan yeah. and, you know, sort of straight. And I even told him, like, he and Andy, who do a lot of the dialogue, and there's a lot of, Andy has all the funny lines. Jim doesn't even have all the funny lines, yeah. which about halfway through the movie, Jim's like, I don't have any of the funny lines. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with this? Rewrites exactly. are necessary. He, he finally realized he was a straight yeah. man. But I was like, we're not going to stop for any of these jokes or anything. And he's like, oh, that's a really funny line. Yeah, just blow by it. Just do it, you know? And just, um, so the pacing was really important for me to, to just keep that, keep that up. And I was telling somebody, earlier who just distilled a great screenplay in like a sentence it's like you know great great screenplay act one get your hero stuck in a tree act two throw rocks at him act three <laughs> get him down and we throw we, yeah. just, we just keep throwing rocks at yeah. jim's character and um like you said beat, the, beat hero to death with rock <laughs> yeah, right, right right um so the pacing was really important and even when we got in the editing room it was tough because there's a lot of there's a lot of great it's very dialogue um, heavy because when you don't have money, you can at least have words. And um, and we we did want to give it a good classic look and good filmic look, which was also really important. But I left a lot of really fun dialogue on the ground because we wanted to keep the pace going and just not have just not lose people. Um, what one of the things I always wonder is. Um for dark comedies, how difficult is it to sort of balance that darkness versus the comedy? Because there's some dark comedies, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit, like, I'll, there's some dark comedies where I just can't appreciate it because it's like everyone is so unlikable that I can't really enjoy the movie. And this one, you keep Jim's character in a place where it's sort of like you feel for him for a lot of it. Like, it's fucked up, but you're like, I, 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 I empathize. Like, if I were in that situation, I'd be like, what the fuck do I do? Yeah. Um, is it difficult to sort of keep it from becoming too dark too soon or too funny and not dark enough? Because it seems like that sort of balance could really skew the film one way or another. Totally. Uh, and even now when you talk to people, like I, I saw somebody wrote something recently that was very complimentary, which was great, but they also said, oh, it could have been a lot funnier. And um, I'm like, yeah, we could have gone more comedy or it, it some, could other, just some dark, other people were, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I mean, you know, the, the system, somebody else was like, well, we'd like to have that for our thing, but it's, you know, it's really not bloody enough for us. Can you make it bloodier? And I'm like, yeah, but we're, we're not doing that. So it is a very fine line. And I, I think it throws some people because they can't quite pigeonhole it. And I don't think it's that complicated because I see there's, there's movies out that I think are like, well, that's, that's. That's a dark drama with humor. Sure, or yeah, that's absolutely. A dark comedy thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it it was a balancing act to make sure it was grounded and we weren't making it a horror movie, you know. But but having some horrific elements in it. Is that is that just one of the scary things about making independent films in general? Though is because I was, I was talking about this with Jim also. Is it's you know there's so much genre and so much bleed between genres and stuff in independent film. Whereas like mainstream film, it's like horror film. Comedy right. and a lot of audiences come in just expect that. And he was talking about like having to tell his family and stuff. Like, no, this is this is dark. Expect dark. Right. Is there a lot of challenge and sort of approaching that with audiences or fear that audience are just going to come in with sort of like these preconceived notions of like Parks and Rec? It'll be funny and stuff like that. Completely. Where it's like that is not what this movie is. You need to like experience this movie either with an open mind or understand what you're getting into. I I, I, I totally agree with you. In in in. That's part of it. I think the, when the movie starts, everyone's like, well, I know this guy. I know Jim O'Hare. He plays, you know, Jerry. So it's going to be a Jerry movie. Or he, he <laughs> plays the big, you know, it's like, and part so of. so lovable. Yeah. Part of casting him and in, in, in doing this was almost out of anger. Was oh, like, God, I, I know it. Jim really well. And I know he's a really fantastic actor. And I know that in Hollywood, he stretches about 15% of that. 
and I was like, I'm tired of seeing him as, oh, the donut eating cop or the, you know, so-and-so this or yeah. that. And so let's really give him some. Well, I love but I think people, it. people like watch it and it, but that's what I like. It sort of starts at a place whether you know him or not, but you, you know, and then it just starts to slowly slide and then it just keeps going. <laughs> it's probably like, in some ways, like a psychological test of audiences, like what response you get from people. Some people be like, that was right. hilarious. I loved it all the way through. Right. Some are like, that disturbed me. Or like, and you probably can tell a lot about individuals based on their reaction to the movie. I worked with, a, um, I, I just commercial work and things like that. I've been on sets. That's where I kind of learned my directing chops and what to do and what not to do but I remember working with a uh, continuity person who was David Lynch's Whoa. and she was yeah, and, and I've had the luxury of working with a lot of you know, I worked with one who was Steven Spielberg and, but David Lynch's and she would tell stories and she said yeah you know he's just like the most normal guy and everything and she said but we'd be you'd look around they're shooting a scene and it's the most horrific thing and you're staring at everything You're and the cast is you know and the crew are all horrified and then I'd turn and look at David and he was like going I, I I can't even imagine like <laughs> trying like the continuity of some of those films like you know Lost yeah. Highway oh or something God. like that or was it Mulholland Drive like it's just like I can't even imagine trying to be like this isn't this is not like in line or something yeah. like that no. he does this is, does whatever he wants so that's I mean I guess that's some sort of inspiration so that was that was part of part of it was was really at least um, you know here's the thing I learned you know we didn't have time and we didn't we just. We knew what we wanted to do, and we got the right actors in place, and that's a lot of it right there. I mean, these guys came prepared, and they nail it, and we did two takes, and we're, like, moving on. That's awesome. Thing. And um, that was that was the thing. We I guess we kind of knew. I knew tonality where I wanted to be. Um, and you, you, you surprised yourself along the way, but, but we just sort of stuck to it. Just, That's cool. Just went, you know. Um, one, uh, one other question, I guess, before we start wrapping up is I wanted to talk about Anne and Andrew. I sort of saw them as sort of like a devil angel sort of relationship to Jim and sort of like trying to skew him one way or the other. Was it like sort of trying to create their relationships with them and sort of that dynamic of like, which way will he sort right. of skew in this crazy path that he's on? Yeah, it's it, it's it's nice. You know, it's funny. You're the first person who sort of picked up on the Anne vibe of of going for that. Andrew's sort of there, and I'm not. You know, it's it it's there. And and frankly, um, we could have played it much more supernatural. And sure, we didn't totally. we wanted to sort of play it. Um, yeah, uh, you know, it's funny. Because Jim and Andy, I mean, those guys could go on the road together now because they were just <laughs> in a car the whole time, yeah. you know, doing their thing, and they're just wonderful together. And then, but to see suddenly, you know, the dynamic with Andrew and and Annie. Um, yeah. Annie is a, you know, it's funny. I told her she she has one of my favorite scenes of the whole movie when Jim and her in the car together, just having a conversation. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite scenes, and um, she's she's like the heart of the movie. Totally, absolutely. You know. And um, and again, she's kind of countercast. You know, her char characters on television are usually <laughs> yeah. like hard cutthroat and, bitch. Yeah, cutthroat <laughs> bitch. Okay, yeah. you know, from House, like and, infamous, right? And like, just to play her totally on the sweet side and everything, yeah. and people just fall in love with her has, has been great. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the film is Middleman. Uh, premiered here at SIF. Um, was it believe is middlemanmovie.com middlemanmovie.com and that's yep. the best place to go for finding out about future uh, screenings yeah. and all that sort of stuff yeah we're going to keep people posted there we're hopefully you know honestly Seattle this has been great um, the community has totally welcomed us uh, we've, it's really really been great and and um, and some good buzz, and so tonight we'll find out. I mean, the, being the premiere tonight, and we'll find out how we did. <laughs> we, we, we love films in Seattle, so I, I, I don't think there should be any problem Great. with that. So um, thank you so much for doing Thanks. this, Ned. I wish you the best of luck with thank this you. film, and I can't wait to see what you and Jim do next. Great. Thanks a lot. Stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the side. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.